Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a playthrough of what you can see here on the screen is going to be Season 2 of Final Girl, our first solo playthrough of the new season or series. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at The Intruders, uh, which will take place in a different location than the ones from the original, different Final Girls. Now, I'm going to be using the ones straight from the box, and we're going to go over this setup very quickly, as well as set up the special requirements for the Intruders set in Final Girl. Now, to play Final Girl, you will need a core box and one other, um, whatever they call them, not season pass, but a series box that I think it's a... Uh, called something interesting. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what they're called. A feature film box that will allow you to uh, be able to play the game uh, in its entirety. Now, you don't need more than one, but you do need one. So let's get started. We're going to take our cassettes. We're going to plug them into our hi-fi stereo CD, or no, not CD player, cassette player from the 90s, and we're going to get into Final Girl. All right, y'all, here is our core box for Final Girl for the Intruders. Now, the, the rule, I already have the main box out, and the cards are set out on the mat. That's the only thing I've done so far. Got the dice out. Now, I'm using enhanced tokens. These are not typically the tokens that come with the game. They're wooden meeple-type tokens here. Uh, on the, uh, the time track and on the terror track, we have this miniature. That, those are from expansions. So you'll see those as we go. And, of course, we got the six dice. Uh, they're not really from expansions. What are they called? They're from the prop box of props, which came in Season 2 and uh, gave us those opportunities. There are six big, chunky dice that have a number of things on them. We'll cover as we get ready to play the game. But the first thing you do in a game of Final Girl, after opening up the main box and laying out the tableau of cards that come in the basic box of the game, which are these cards here, is you're going to open the... Um, the uh, feature film box and get the things you need out. Now, in the new series and in the enhanced box that you got for the series number one or season number one, you were able to put the cast and crew. There's a cast and crew box where you put all the, the final girls in there. All the miniatures are in there. But I did currently leave the final girls for each of the season boxes within the box just to show you who goes with what as we play through this series. But as I play through it, I'm going to be taking those final girl cards and transitioning them over to the cast and crew box for the appropriate season. Like I said, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop open the box for the intruders, which is the one we're going to play through. I haven't seen anybody do this one yet, so I said, what the heck? Might as well get this done and play this one. So what do we have? We have a box like this. Let's start with this side first, I guess. You have a box like this, and the lid comes off, and this becomes the first part of our board. This is the intruders. Now, you'll see if you're familiar with the game, you'll see something different here. There are three of them. That's because in this series, in, in this uh, feature, uh, we're playing the intruders, which is like I can't remember what the name of the movie is with Liv Tyler and everything. You'll probably remember it for me, where the killers came and stalked them, and they were dressed like this. It was pretty interesting. You notice on the killer board in this new map, there's a bunch of things that you can do with. You don't that you can place on there for different things to show you what uh, they're supposed to be, but we're just going to lay this right here where it belongs, and if there's special things that we need to put there or special feature film cards we need to put there, that's where they'll go. Now, with each uh, se uh, season box, you're going to get a set of special rules. This one has quite a few, uh, a lot more than most. Some of these, some of them are one page or half pagers, or I think in the case of the uh, Camp Happy Trails, just a couple of sentences. But we do have special rules, on, and here we'll go over them as part of the setup and everything else that we need to do because there's multiple killers in this, which is unusual for the game. So they give you an example of that. We'll put that aside for now as we get ready to set up the rest of our game. Now, in this tray right here, I always put the villains um, in the boxes for the actual um, series that they're in. So we see, Now, they do have the wooden meeples which come with the normal game but if you have the miniatures you also have these ones so we're going to get them out there are three representing the three killers i do not have them painted and i apologize for that but we'll get them out plus all the cards and tokens associated with them now we don't actually need these we might need this one so i'm going to take that out and there is a place on the board for little uh, special items like this. So we'll put those out as well. I can't remember where they... I remember where they went on the first board. I don't remember where they go in this one. So we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, but there are usually little bonus items. I'm just going to stick them over here for right now until we figure that out. 
And then we'll just put that back in there along with the, the plastic lid that goes over it. We'll see what cards are in the box for the intruders and uh, get those out to check them out as well. Let's see, here are the tarot cards. We got the tarot cards right here. These are gonna get mixed in with the tarot cards in the base game that drive the game's AI behaviors. You can see these here. I'm not gonna spoil them. We're just gonna play them out as we go. And I don't think there's anything unusual. I'll look at the rules for this. And then also we have uh, these, um, the cards that make up the top and bottom half. Now this is, this happens at a certain time in the game and when they get their dark power about the middle of their bloodlust track. And uh, you'll see that in a second. While we're here, I do have this cool little bloodlust token that came in the box of props. That's going to go right there on the first spot. You can see that they start off rather relatively weak, but as we advance the game, they go higher and higher. This one particularly hits you on the terror track a few times as well. But we're going to take one of these, for example. We're going to do maybe a little out of order, but you'll get the idea. We're going to take one of these, and I'll make sure that we're, we play by the rules correctly and read, read the intruder's rules. But one of these is going to go up here. The rest will go aside. And then one of these will go on the bottom. This is the finale card. So when we get to the end of the deck of terror cards, if we haven't managed to defeat the intruders, we will be dealing with this problem, uh, the dark powers. So we'll see how that goes. And now this also tells you what the killer's basic ability is. Now in this one, you can see right here, there's a K. That's the killer. So on the killer's turn, uh, we're going to do this. All killers, that's all three of them, are going to move after the, the final girl or a victim, whichever is closer, and attack them. So that means that uh, every turn they're going to be attacking, likely to be attacking somebody. So now that we've done that with the intruders, we've gotten those components out. We haven't set them up entirely yet. We're going to flip the box over. We're going to look at the other side. And this is what makes the game one of the unique, interesting things for the game. Now, I thought originally this was going to be gimmicky, but it's really not. It actually works really well. Um, so these are the components for the Wingard Cottages. It's like a little motel where these intruders are going to be stalking our final girl. And it shows you what's in the cards right there and the various tokens. And then we have some special rules, which we will go over as we complete our setup, but we're first going to just get this part of the board set up. So we got the wind, the wind guard cottage. Now, normally if you're not playing with the mats, you're going to use these things to like set up your cards, where the item cards go, and then the setup deck right there. But we're it's a little different in this because we have the cool mat to play on. So we're then going to take out, similarly, we're going to be taking out the Deck. Now I'm going to have to get the miniature out for this, the final girl that we end up using in this because it is in our cast and crew box. The miniature is. It's just the cards that are not. And we're going to get, get out all the items that are in this deck. So right now we got two uh, final girls for the intruders. We have Ginny, which I don't think that's what they meant it for. But anyway, uh, we have two. We have, um, let's see here, the cards are falling all over the place. Hold on. Don't want to make a big mess. There are some additional tarot cards in this, so we'll deal with that um, for the location. And we'll see, this is when making a horror roll. This is Ava. She's got five health when making a horror roll. You can re-roll all four results. That's pretty good. Or all one results, I think that is. Yeah. And uh, that, of course, to do that, you have to complete this and save this many victims and do that sort of thing. Then we have Ginny. Ginny's got a lot of stuff. Uh, choose two of the following that will apply to all resorts, results when resolving that action for the remainder of the game. So we can move plus one space when uh, resolve a walk. We can uh, plus one health when resolving a short rest. We can plus one attack when doing a weak attack. So uh, Ginny's pretty cool. They're both pretty cool. I mean, this ability to reroll dice is pretty powerful, I think. Um, I do think, though, this is trickier. I think I do want to... Well, let's see how tough is Ginny to get on the board. So here's one of the things right now. Ava's easier to get on the board. Get her main power flipped over. She's only get, needs five, and Ginny needs six. She's got more health. She gets a couple other things, but she's got to save vic six victims to get to this point instead of five. Hmm, I think it's going to be a die roll. Let's do that. Okay, we're going to take a die. One, two, three, four, five, six, and see what we get. A one, so it's going to be Ginny. She is going to be our final girl for this scenario. Now, i I got to read the rules for the specifics of the campaign, but we're going to take all these other, dead, all these other extra tokens for uh, Wingard Cottage and put them over here. And we'll see what we do with those. And then we'll take this, of course, and we'll put it back in the box. Now, there's also these For Your Eyes Only cards. Here's the one for um, Ginny. 
Now, we're not going to open this because it says, do not open until you have survived a game with Jenny. Well, we haven't survived a game with Jenny yet, so we're not going to open those quite yet. In the Windguard Cottage, there's quite a few special uh, different decks I see. There's these uh, supply item decks and also crafted items. So we're going to see how this plays out. We're going to take a look at the special rules for the intruders, or actually, in this case. Now remember, you can mix and match. You don't have to play the intruders at the wind, uh, the Windguard Cottage. You can play and mix and match with any of the other locations in the game to get a different experience. But for us, we're going to be playing uh, the the experiences is meant to be played with this these uh, enemies and uh, see how this goes. So let's look at the special rules for the wind the Wingard Cottage, or, yeah, it's Wingard. Okay, yeah. Um, it says, oh, Wingard, Wingard Cottage is a perfect getaway nestled in the woods on the edge of a pristine lake. The cottage has been in the family for generations, and although it has uh, changed over the years, it still has the same charming quality as when it was first built. Many special events and relaxing getaways have been taken, uh, have been hosted here. Unfortunately, it has also seen its share of tragedies, horrible events that have plagued the family throughout the history, the home's history. Um, best not to dwell on the past, though, for surely your stay will be peaceful and carefree. And it shows the extra, there's various tokens that come in the, in the play. You also see that it's got eight tarot cards, which is normal, because um, you're going to mix them with the ones from the intruders, and that's how you're going to end up with your deck. And the reason it's done that way, again, is because you can mix and match the, the enemies with the locations to have a different feel for the terror deck itself. So we're going to be doing that. But we also see we have some special setup cards. So special setup. Set up the game as normal with the following changes when playing Wingard Cottage. Place the supply item cards face up in the play area. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, we can certainly do that. Uh, shuffle the crafted item cards together and deal out four face up in the play area. So we're going to have to deal out a bunch of cards here related to the uh, location. So we'll do that right now, I guess, since that's what we have to do. So it says, first off, we're going to take, we're going to place four of the supply item cards face up in the play area. I guess there are only four, so we'll have to place these. It's woods, wood, nails, rope, and Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so we'll put those right here. And we'll get have those out for our place. So those four are up. And then it says to take a number of the crafted, shuffle the crafted items to cards together, and deal four face up in the player. So we're going to have these. There's quite a stack of these. So we're not going to be playing with the majority of them, it looks like. But we'll have these four as well. And I guess I'll put these right above the item deck. Since there's not a specific location for these. I guess you could put them here with the other cards, but I don't want it to get too cluttery in that area so we can see that we have discarded tools, rope, nails, and wood. But let's uh, just shuffle these up a bit more. And we'll get one, cut, two, three, and four. There we go. We'll put those aside and we'll place those up above uh, of the mat. So what do we have here? We have a snare. This is a craftable item. It's got three uses, and it says it needs rope and wood and one time to build a snare. And we'll, If we build these, we'll see what the effects of these are. We'll move these down right there over the item deck areas. And then we have a spear, which we can build with a knife, wood, and two time, which will give us a spear. A disemboweler, because, you know, you got to have one of those in your arsenal. A wooden bat, a knife, rope, and two time. So that's going to be a tougher one. You can see it does two damage, and it's a two-handed weapon. So it, and it has a special ability. Let's just see what this special ability is. After applying damage to the target enemy, reduce the terror track for each other enemy on the same or adjacent space. So um, we scare them if we disembowel one of their partners, basically. That's the way it seems to me. Okay, so that is the two special setups. Now we got special rules. Definition. House. Well, first of all, the following spaces, kitchen, bedroom times two, bathroom, family room, foyer, laundry room, and garage. Indoors refers to all the spaces inside the house as well as the shed and the boathouse. Outdoor spaces refer to all the spaces that are not considered indoors. Pretty easy. Supply items. Here's the rules for the supply items. Some spaces on the board have supply item symbols corresponding to a specific type of supply item. 
uh, discarded tools, nails, rope, and wood. While on one of those spaces, you may gain the corresponding supply item card at the cost of one time. You cannot do this while moving through the space. So that means you've got to stop there. Hmm. Uh, place it uh, into your backpack slot. When discarding supply item cards, it goes back to the area, play area face up available to be gained again. Crafted items. Uh, crafting allows you to gain available crafted item cards, discarding the item cards and or supply item cards listed on the cards, the crafted item card. So let's say, see how many times we can say card. As well as losing the required amount of time. Whenever you gain a crafted item card, either place it into a hand or backpack slot when discarding a crafted item card. It goes back to the play area, we know that. Okay, uh, when item items with limited uses are discarded to gain a crafted item card, those, those uses carry over to the crafted item. For example, if the shotgun has one use left when it's discarded to craft a sawed-off shotgun, then the sawed-off shotgun will also only have one use left. Okay, the same would apply for the trash can lid. Just did it, blah, blah. Got it. Gotcha. Okay, so that is it for the location. Of course, we have still have some things to do, but we're not going to do them right this minute as we get ready to set up our intruders. Now, as you can see, the intruders have quite a bit. They have three finale cards, which you you saw me place the finale on the top right there, and then the, the dark power on the bottom. We've got three dark power cards, one epic dark power card. I'm going to make sure we're not playing with that one. Um, the two final girls, of course, and the 16 terror cards. We've got the track. we got the two killer meeples. We're not going to be using those. And these extra tokens we will not be using in place of the tokens that we have in the game uh, that were in the... Um, box of props which you'll see in a minute when I set up the final set up the end of the intruder right there special setup okay set up the game as normal with the following changes when playing the intruders place all three killer meeples red from the core box black and gray but we're going to use miniatures on the killer start location we got that I got them all ready to go I give each killer their starting health including a final health token place the active killer token on Trish's uh, the red killer circle space on the killer board. Okay, well we'll get that. We'll do that right now. Now we got to find the uh, characters because they are in this deck. So we're going to get them out. I believe that there are three different characters for them. Character cards, rather. I'm just going to look through. I, I may be wrong about that. I'm going to double check, but maybe I'm just incorrect. All right. Well, anyway, we are going to be setting up the three killers, but we have to place this starting token. That's this thing right here in Trish's space, and Trish is, uh, I think, the one with the, man, which one is that? <laughs> I don't know, I have to look it up. It says the gray meeple, but it doesn't say which space, which one that is. Oh, I guess it's the middle one with the bag on her head. So, um, that look like, it says, does say Trish, doesn't it? I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm going crazy already, I'm trying to set this up, let's see. Um, it says Trish's space, the red, oh, the red killer, the red killer's Trish, and that is going to be the one with the, the crazy uh, mask on. That's this one. This is Trish right here. So Trish is going to be the first killer at, at the beginning of the game. All right, well, we'll set up the rest of the game, and then I'll go over the special rules. We'll have everything kind of set up and ready to go. One of the first things we do have to do, though, is put these tarot cards together and uh, get those going. Now, maybe... Well, we'll see. We'll see. We just got to shuffle all the tarot cards together, and I think um, we play with. I'm going to look and see if we, there's any additional rules that I'm missing before I move on. So let me do that. Okay, we want to get these good and shuffled. Just want to make sure there's nothing special we have to do with these, and there isn't. We just need to um, get them uh, shuffled up and then deal out ten, just like in the normal game. There's nothing different or weird about them, which is good for us because that's going to make things a little easier. And then we, again, we have 10 cards to complete the game, and if we fail at that, then we, we uh, will have to go to the finale, which is always bad. You want to try and make sure the killers are dead, or the killer, in most cases, is dead before that happens. And here we go. Let's go. We're going to go one. I'm just going to cut it a couple times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. All right, we're going to put those over there and get them into the, their deck. We'll shuffle them up as well, even though they're pretty well shuffled. 
and we'll get them going. Be right back. Next thing we do, and it doesn't look like there's any special rules around this for this scenario, or this uh, this villain rather, or the uh, Wingard Cottage, is we're going to set up a uh, look uh, item decks. We're basically going to deal out four cards. We're going to turn up the top across three piles. We're going to turn up the top uh, card on each one, so we know what's in the boathouse, in the shed, and in the garage. Let's do that. We have one, two, three, two, two, three. Three, three, and four, four, four. Now, you can see that there are leftover item cards as well. We always end up with leftover cards. That's one of the, the great things about this game and its replayability. So the top card for here is going to be an energy drink. That's going to be in the boathouse. Bah, energy drinks are okay. It just gives you three times or allows you to move an extra space. Let's see what we got here. We have a wooden bat. That's good. That is in the shed, right where it belongs, right? Hmm, we'll see. And then last but not least, we have a knife that we can... Garner at the garage. Okay, now there are no bonus items in here other than the ones I put there, the crafted items I put up above, but we're going to leave it at that. And I, I think that is it for special setup. Any setup rules? I'm going to read through the uh, rules for the killer, but I do know that we also have to set up, get a setup card and see what that's going to look like. Now remember, this is specific to Wingard Cottage, and it's going to be uh, show where our character is. Which I need. you still need to get her miniature out, and also the uh, where the killers are. So I think I've shuffled this up enough. Let's cut it one more time and see what we get. We get fishing trip. So we'll put that right out here. I will come back out, and that will be set up as intended. And if you look at the card, you can see where all the victims are. You can see where the killers start. They start as uh, entering into the area with the, the cottage. There's our final girl. She'll be in this location right here, which looks like to be the bathroom. And then we have her friends that we're visiting with her here. Maybe the, the gardener, who knows, some other folks that are going to die. Or hopefully be saved. We'll see. This is the cast and crew, crew box for Series 2. Um, if you're interested in that, there are some special things in here. There's a new zombie scenario, some additional final girls. But I am looking for Ginny. I'm not sure what Ginny uh, looks like in here, so we're going to have to see. Now, I think she's got a little bob haircut, so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Um, uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I think I found it. Yeah, here, let's get this out right here. This kind of looks like a Ginny. What do you think? Is that a Ginny? Sure looks like that. Yeah, that looks like her hair. So we're going to say that's Ginny. Um, and if that's what we, if I'm wrong, you'll let me know, I'm sure. All right, and we're, then we're going to put that back. And you can see it shows you uh, quite conveniently what goes in the box so that you don't have to guess. And there's also a big sheet that also shows that to you. But uh, we're going to get everybody placed out. Now when I come back, everybody will be on the board. And like magic, we have our board set up. You can see the three killers coming in right here. I don't know all their names. I do know that one is Trish. <laughs> but we'll see how this plays out. Now you just take this and you put it up with the setup card. That's the, the, one of the last things that happens. We have one more thing for setup and that's to draw our starting event and see what that is. Now these sometimes perpetuate. They might last the entire game. They might not. Uh, a, a, additional events may come out depending on the tarot cards that ended up in our deck. We might see none. We could see several. We'll see. But let's see what we get. Marked for death. <laughs> Why did you let them into my ho our home? Okay, place the outsider in the bathroom. Whenever the killer must choose a target, the outsider is chosen instead. On its way towards the outsider, the killer kills one victim in each space it moves through, including the starting and ending space. This is terrible. we got to get the outsider out of here. And the outsider is going to start in the bathroom with some other folks. Why is there two people? And why is he in the bathroom with Ginny? And you know what? That guy needs to get out of here for sure. Okay, um, that's bad. So that's going to be our starting event. We might see more events as we go along, but here is the outsider meeple. And it says it starts in the bathroom. You can see that Jenny is in the bathroom. So apparently this person that crashed the, the location, maybe one of the family members, one of the Wingard family members, is decided to go into the bathroom and have an argument with Ginny about the amount of people she brought to their house to go fishing. How's that sound? It's a fishing trip after all, right? Okay, now I'm going to read the special rules for the intruders. Then we'll probably call this episode a day because it might be a little long. And then we're going to, I'll, maybe I'll go over the rules, just a brief overview of how you play. And then we'll call it and the next episode will be our, our, uh, episode to start playing. All right, so special rules. The intruders are a group of three killers. 
Uh, here, let me just back up on that a little bit. There you go. But at any given moment, only one is active when resolving the... Okay, so only one resolves with the power, the this power right here, or, or placing the killer. The active killer is identified as by the active killer token, changing the active killer. The active killer will change throughout the game, sometimes even more than once in the same turn. There are three ways the active killer can change. When you attack one of the killers, whether you damage it or not, or use an item card to damage it, the killer immediately becomes the active killer. Place the active killer token on the circle with that killer. Gotcha. Uh, when resolving the following symbols, the active killer token will move accordingly. The killer, uh, uh, the killer it at, uh, ends up on is now the active killer. Okay, that's fine. So if, if there's an active killer movement token on one of the cards, we'll resolve that. And, it, and then it says also, move the active killer token down to the next killer. I guess that happens in the killer's turn. We'll, we'll see how this plays out. If a killer is dead, it is skipped and determined and, and when determining the active killer. Note, when moving the active killer token, the token will wrap around from the top to the bottom or bottom to the top. For example, if the, killer, if the active killer token is on the topmost killer and you need to move it up, it moves to the killer at the bottom. Pretty straightforward, right? Resolving killer effects. Some cards will have an effect that's that uh, effect that all killers will resolve. When this occurs, ignore the active killer token and start by resolving the effects from the topmost killer or the killer um, on the killer board, followed in an order uh, by each one below it. Okay, no problem. Panic. For the purposes of resolving panic, the victim in a space with any killer, not just the active killer, will panic. Okay, that's, that's interesting. No. Minor dark powers affect for, uh, effects from these apply to all killers, not just the active killer. When damage is applied to any killer and a minor dark power card is in play, the damage is first applied to the minor dark power card. Okay. Intruder death and final health token. When one of the killers still has its black final health token and loses its final health, then there is still uh, at least one other killer on the board. The phase does not immediately end as it normally would. First, lay down the killer on its side. Something's falling in my shed. <laughs> uh, first, it says, first lay down the killer on its side. Uh, I lost where I was. Okay. There is something trying to get into my shed. <laughs> An animal or something. Hold on. I have a family of rabbits that have decided to make a home under my shed, even though I don't think they can dig a hole in there because we had this uh, special stuff packed there, but they're... They're somewhere else in the yard, but they go under there quite, off, quite often to avoid the dog. Um, and this is a studio shed that I, I built, as some of you may know. If you go back to my videos, you can see when I built it and what I did. Um, this is where I, I do all my filming, and I have uh, all my stuff out here to uh, play games with. It's pretty cool. Okay, uh, after the... Uh, you know what? I don't need to read this. We'll just go through this as we play. How's that? That sounds like a good plan. All right, well, let's get let's get started. We're going to go over... We, I guess I do have to finish setting up the the... The intruders will do that real quickly, and it looks like there is a space for three of the... Hmm, that's interesting. I gotta look at that. All right, when setting up our final girl and our villains, we have to take these special tokens. I'm gonna shuffle them up a little bit. And now on the ups, on the back sides of those, it might be zero, it might be one, two, or I think there's a three, like a single three. Um, and what that means is when we go into our final, our last health, either us or them, there's a chance we might be able to continue on. We get a breath of fresh air. We might, even though we're wounded and, and hurt, we might be able to continue on with the game and, and continue playing if these tokens work out. But I think we'll pick the one for Jenny first, and I think I've got them well shuffled. So you, I don't know what they are. Um, let's take this one. That one goes there. We'll take this one, put it there. Hopefully these are a bunch of zeros. That would be wonderful. And there, each of the villains gets a token, and there's six, there's basically six health for each villain. So when you're setting it up, like you can see that Jenny has six health. You're going to put five in the box here, and then this plus this one. Now when you get there, you notice that there is an extra die on there. That means you get to exert yourself, kind of, and roll some extra dice when you're going there. And when this comes off the board, you replace it with these, which basically says that you have the extra die, but it doesn't, doesn't give you anything else beyond that then. All right, well, that is that is it for the setup. So let's go over the gameplay now. This little board that normally comes in the base game, I think, gives you a great uh, rundown of the gameplay. It's not printed on the mat, which I thought was interesting. They should have, maybe because it, it's a little, not as easy to read on the mat, so maybe they didn't put it there. But um, 
we're going to go into it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in the action phase where we play a set of action cards based on how much time we have. We always have six time at the beginning of a turn. You can see that uh, these cost potentially health, and, or in this one it heals you, uh, and then time. Uh, there's also other effects on these, but you can say you can walk, which might allow you, if you have really good successes, move two spaces, and it costs you time, etc., etc. So these are our zero cost times, because the other thing you do is plan. So once you've completed your turn, with any remaining time that you have, you get to plan, which means for the next turn, you get to pick some new cards to play. And any cards you played that turn, even these zero ones, are going to be out of the game for that round. Or the next round, rather. So you, you played them this round. They're not going to be available to you to buy that round, but they'll come back in your hand the next round, especially all these zero ones. Um, and then, of course, you can all the ones you purchase go back. You'll see how that works out. But that's So we start with our play phase. We're going to play these cards to do things on the board, hopefully save people, hopefully do some damage to the, the villains. It's going to be pretty interesting. We'll see how this plays out. Now, I haven't played this scenario yet. I pulled it out of the box for the first time. I played... Final Girl a uh, number of times, especially since my last playthrough, because I want to make sure, not only do I enjoy it, but I want to make sure I, I knew most of the rules and wouldn't make too many mistakes. Uh, the next, So again, after you played all your action cards, you're going to spend the time, and you got a, a time token. It's going to go from six down to zero. Now let's say you use four time. Then after you've taken all your actions, you still have, or you have four time, rather. That means you got four time to spend on these cards to build your next round with. And it's your planning phase. That's right here. It says purchase action cards. And then as soon as you're done purchasing and you've used up all the time you want to use, which should be everything, you reset the six. And then you go on to the next part, which is the killer, flight, killer phase. Oh, and then you replace all the cards that you had played last turn back on the tableau after you've selected the cards you're going to play for the next round. Because they'll be available to you in the following round. Uh, then you're going to go to the killer phase. You're going to resolve the killer action, which is on this card, which I showed you. It's all killers. Uh, are going to move and attack somebody, that's really bad. I mean, that's, that's rough. And it does say all killers, not the active killer. So that's that's pretty tough. Um, we'll see how this goes. I might lose this very badly. Because they're, they're tough, too. they got six health each. Now, yes, the bigger villains have more health, but there's three of them. They basically have a lot of health. That's pretty pretty nasty. Uh, then we're gonna, After that, we're going to draw the top tarot card and see what happens there. Uh, that's the killer phase, and we're going to take whatever actions on that tarot card. Then we're going to run into panic phase. So if any, if, if the killers move into a, a location and kill somebody, if there's anybody that's alive there, they're going to panic and run away uh, to another location. And that's why there's a bunch of numbers, dice roll numbers on the board. Then you're going to go into upkeep phase. We're going to reveal the, the final or uh, the finale if there are no tarot cards left in the deck. And we're going to, we can rearrange the items that we've collected at that point. And that's basically how the game is going to run. And hopefully we will defeat the intruders before they get too powerful because they're, uh, they will get more powerful as the game goes on. As they kill people, they get energized and fueled by that. And then hopefully we'll be able to take them out. One thing we've got to do is get this Mark for Death character off the board because they're going to beeline to the Mark for Death character. And there's really only a couple ways to get there. And I, I, it looks like the shortest route is going to be the safest route for us at the beginning for them, meaning they're going to be moving... Um, uh, in a way that's not going to run them through the, all the people, which is probably by design. But I don't think the, the scenario knew I was going to be pulling this Mark for Death guy. And what I mean by that is that he's in the bathroom. And I think the shortest route would be this way. I'll have to count it out when they move. It's only going to matter when they move. The other route's this way. This seems longer. I don't know, but we're, we're going to, in our first round, try and get this clown uh, out of town. Now, how do we get people out of town? Well, we get them to the driveway here. That's a, a place we can get him out. Uh, out to safety we can take them out to the woods and shove them out and say get the heck out of here or they can come they can leave by the road of course right now the road has the three killers on it so that's not going to be very likely we're most likely going to get them through the garage into the driveway with these other folks here and try and fill in jenny's uh abilities there uh, by saving people okay the other thing the last thing i'll talk about in this is that the terror track now it is going to start on this particular scenario is going to start on three with this villain and uh, it this tells you how many dice you get to roll if we can knock it down into the green space we'll be able to use three dice if we can pump it up and if it gets pumped up into this space we're going to only be able to use one dice now we're just going to play on the normal mode we're not going to play on super hard you can which means it's much more difficult this is called extreme horror mode we're not going to be doing that there is a place on the board that on the printed board the mat i do like the neoprene mat by the way this, see this this top line here 
is the extreme horror line, and then this inside line is the normal mode. That's what we're going to be playing on. So we'll, we won't be moving it along this track, we'll be moving along the inside track, and again it starts on three. We also have a Jenny's health setup. She's got six total health. She's got to kill guys with a, a total of 18 health. That's pretty rough. Um, but And, and it, could, it could actually have a couple more, depending on what the, the final health token is on each of the killers. I have a feeling these guys, maybe they're slow, maybe they don't do that much, um, because with three of them on the board, I think we might be in trouble. Now, I can't forget our our items either. we got to collect these items. Now, remember, we can collect them in certain locations um, to, to make these special items for this scenario. And I believe those are the... Um, we can we can get them out of certain spots. I'm trying to remember where they were. I was looking on the on the map. The supply items they can be found where. Uh, well, I'll look at the rules before we get there uh, because you, you can find them in certain locations. It might say on it. It doesn't. It just says use for crafting. But we'll we'll have certain locations like I think there's the garage. I think they're marked the boathouse, the garage, and the shed where we can get um, the craftable items and or items and the craftable materials. But I'll, I'll look at that to make sure that's right before we start playing. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is We're set up, ready to go with a big episode of Final Girl. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is a great game. Um, it, is, it is a difficult game. Uh, and it's solo, solo only, which is one of the few really cool solo only games. Um, I mean, it's really cool. And if you do get a chance to pick it up, I highly recommend it because it is fun to play. You get to play with all these different horror tropes. You know, in the in the first season, you have the Freddies and the the ghosts and some other stuff. The car, the crazy carnival, and the 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 Michael Myers type characters. In this one, you got these intruders. You have the alien, which is the um, I think it's called the uh, evil morph. You have the the organism, which is like the thing. Uh, then you have a kind of like a um, a fairy tale one with the Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf, and another one which is called The Madness in the Park. I think it has a mummy or something like that. So lots of cool stuff to play in the game, and you can again mix and match all the final girls. It's just a really cool mechanic. Uh, Van Ryder Games has done a, just a knockout job with this game, and it's pretty well balanced. It is hard, and when you start mixing and matching, I imagine the balance can get out a little out of whack because uh, there's no way they can account for all the variables that, that are possible. Uh, but with that said, let's end it here, and I'll see you in the next episode when we start our gameplay. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.